What's up everybody, my name is Sebastian and welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are checking out speed ramp transitions, speed ramps and slow-mo effects in DaVinci Resolve. With that being said, let's just jump right into the video. So we are in DaVinci Resolve in the edit page and this is what we are doing today. Coming in with a speed ramp slowing down and then speed ramp transition into the next clip. So how to do this is drag your footage in, uh, just zoom out a little, drag this in as well, now zoom back in like this. So at the end of this clip is something that I don't need. Wait, where is it? Right there. Don't need that much sky and at the beginning of this clip. Right there. Don't need this as well. So just delete this. So in order to make this tutorial as short as possible. Make sure you're filmed at a higher frame rate than your timeline is. When your timeline is 24 frames per second, make sure you filmed in 60 or 120 frames per second, because if you slow it down in post, this will make it smooth and just a pleasure to your eye. If you filmed at 24 frames per second and your timeline is 24 frames per second, then it will just look stuttery and awful if you slow it down in post. So make sure to film at 60 or 120 frames per second when you want to slow something down. So with that being said, if you filmed at let's say 60 frames per second or 120 frames, you can slow it down. If you forget it and let's say this clip, this clip is 60 frames per second I guess just check the metadata this is 60 frames and this is 24 I can slow this down by 60% because I filmed it at 60% if I filmed it at 120 frames per second I could slow it down to 20% I cannot slow this down because it will just look starry but if I still want to slow this down for whatever reason just uncheck metadata check inspector scroll all the way down to read time and scaling project settings optical flow just hit this then go back motion estimation project settings go to speed warp but keep in mind speed warp takes a lot of processing power from your computer you should be better off with enhance better or enhance faster this will just do the same thing without taking shit ton of your processing power. So let's say we want to speed this up until the motorbike comes. Then hit Control R on your keyboard to open up the speed change. Click the other clip, Control R again. So speed change is there. Now right click and read time curve, right click and read time curve. Go to this drop down menu, retime frame, uncheck retime frame, check retime speed. Do the same thing for the second click. clip. Uncheck retime frame, check retime speed, and this is what we're working with. So now let's say we wanna slow this clip, uh, we wanna speed this clip up. Just hit this diamond node speed point and you get your speed point right there so this what this does is it separates your clip into two parts 100% and 100% so we want to speed this up so what we do is either we just drag this in but make sure if you're dragging it in you don't have the bracket selected on your cursor you need these arrows then you can just drag it in or you can just open the drop down, change speed, change speed to let's say 400. Okay. Uh, this. Let's check 
on and on if you want to have a good playback just go to playback render cage and set this to smart so this is rendering whenever you're doing something so this just goes from 400% to 100% in a harsh cut which is not what we want just hit this speed point and click this and what this does is it smoothens it out and you can just drag this in or out to smoothen it out more or less so let's say right there like this so just play this back way better now good so what we want to do next let's do the speed ramp transition let's say we want to transition right there where my camera is moving hit this diamond node again and select or just drag it in to this then check the speed point hit this curve and just smoothen it out so now let's drag this clip so that it matches but first let's select where we want this transition speed ramp to stop let's say right here then do another speed point and set this to maybe 400 or even a little bit higher check the speed point and curve this so now this should be fine and fit together perfectly so let's watch it back not too bad not too bad you won't even notice that there is a cut in there but to make it look even more natural what we can do now is let's say we want to add some motion blur check the adjustment clip drag it on your timeline and put it like right on the marker where the speed ramp begins and then just cut it where the speed ramp ends so now you have your adjustment clip then go back to the effects library, hit open effects and directional blur and drag it on your adjustment clip. So now get your adjustment clip there, directional blur also there, but the blur angle doesn't fit to your clips. So we go to effects, open effects, and there you got blur strength and blur angle. Let's just crank this up all the way so we actually see the direction our angle is going so what we can do now is just make this a straight line minus 90 or you can even go plus 90 this doesn't matter at all so now it's perfectly fine put the blur strength down like like that so looks better but what we can do now is I'll put this up a little bit zero point let's say 0 0.7 keyframe the motion blur let's just go to the beginning of the adjustment clip and hit this diamond node on blur strength or let's actually say go go down to 0 0.1 then hit the diamond node then drag your playhead to the middle of the transition and bring it up to 0 
then go to the end of the clip and go all the way back down to 0 0.1 what this does is it starts with basically no motion blur goes up goes up 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 until it hits this like hard motion blur and then it goes back down so it looks like this pretty good yeah I think so too but yeah that's it for this tutorial guys I hope you liked it hope you enjoyed it and if you've gotten value out of it please consider leaving a like or a subscription to stay up to date on the next upcoming DaVinci Resolve tutorials. With that being said, thanks guys and see you next time.